In 1945, British and American pilots had rained death and destruction on Germany. Now, in 1948, they were flying again to Berlin. This time, they were keeping the city alive. Berliners were a beaten people in 1945. Their fate was in the hands of the Russians, Americans, British and French, their conquerors. Germany was divided into four occupation zones, Soviet, American, British and French. Three and a half million Berliners lived in a city 110 miles behind the Russian lines. Berlin was linked to the west by a highway and a railway which ran through the Soviet zone. The city itself was divided into four sectors, Soviet, American, British and French. I will tell you, because even in Berlin and in Germany, Berlin and Germany were the only places where the two sides came into contact, that is, Soviet troops and troops from the Allied countries. In other places, we didn't have direct contact between our two armed forces. That was one of the reasons why Berlin became a battlefield for the Cold War. Berliners had lived a precarious existence for years. Food was at near starvation levels and currency was worthless. The black market was king. We bartered everything. A non-smoker who got cigarettes with his ration cards would gladly take them because he could barter them for something more useful. Naturally, we all did it. Cigarettes were our currency. The black market was the only thing that kept us alive. British Foreign Secretary Ernest Bevan had a plan for Germany. He didn't like the Germans, but believed that European recovery depended on them. We have to try and recreate Germany on a democratic basis, give her a chance to live, at the same time, make sure that the security of the rest of Europe is preserved and that aggression cannot take place again. Soviet military maneuvers near Berlin. By 1948, the honeymoon among the Allies was long over. The Soviets wanted a weak Germany under four-power control. America, Britain and France were secretly planning a new German state in their occupation zones. Spies told the Soviet military governor, Marshal Vasily Sokolovsky, about the plan. He gathered us all and said that we He gathered all of us together and read out an intelligence report. The report stated that a secret conference about Germany was held in London. He read out everything that was discussed in London. Sir Brian Robertson, the British military governor, and his American counterpart, General Lucius D. Clay, had to implement the Western plans. 
General Clay was the hardest working man I've ever encountered, no vacation. He skipped lunch because he considered that a waste of time. <clears throat> Instead, he had 20 cups of coffee and two packs of cigarettes a day. What impressed me particularly was his fantastic ability to absorb difficult questions that were quite outside of the framework of his experience. After all, he was a professional soldier. The Allied Control Council met regularly in Berlin. Usually, as here, the proceedings followed a well-worn path. The American, General Clay, and his Western partners exchanged routine information with their Soviet counterparts. But on March 20th, 1948, Sokolovsky wanted more. He spoke in a very tactful and polite fashion, in a very restrained way. He said, could you please fill us in? Tell us what happened at the meeting in London. Clay replied that they weren't going to look into it. Sokolovsky then asked what was the point of having a control council if they were not going to tell us what went on in London and if they kept secret from us the various issues concerning Germany. Have we or haven't we got a control council? The Russian just stood up and he had about five or six of them on the left and the right of them and they just walked out which was not called for because when they closed the meeting it was always done in a professional manner and the general just told everybody to uh, stay put because the meeting wasn't over. The former allies provoked each other. The West had no intention of budging from Berlin but knew the Soviets wanted them out. They feared Stalin might risk war to achieve it. The Western Allies planned a currency reform in their zones. It would wipe out black market profiteers by making old currency valueless and it would tie Germans to the West. The Russians weren't told. May Day 1948. In the Soviet zone, Stalin had merged the Socialist and Communist parties. The new grouping, the Socialist Unity Party, was out in strength. There was even a side swipe at Winston Churchill. For the demonstrators, the real target was the city council, the magistrate, which wanted to run all Berlin on western lines. The majority of the Berlin City Council, supported by the Social Democrats and the Christian Democrats, believed that with currency reform there would be an immediate upturn in the economy. In particular, there would be increased investment by entrepreneurs. On the other hand, the Socialist Unity Party councillors saw it as a threat to the still incomplete nationalisation of property which had belonged to the big companies, to war criminals and to Nazi party members. Generally, to all those whom the Socialist Unity Party blamed for supporting Hitler in 1933. The stage was set for confrontation between the Socialist Unity Party and their pro-Western opponents. These were led by Ernst Reuter, whose family had once been forced to flee from Hitler. His election as mayor of all Berlin had been vetoed by the Russians. Um seine Macht im Schatten des russischen Imperialismus aufzurichten, da haben wir in Berlin. It was um, a very tense atmosphere again, full of uh, 
uh, possibilities that the Russians would uh, try to enforce uh, their power in, in that part of the country, in, in the city of Berlin, of course, that um, maybe the family again would have to flee from dictatorship. West Germans lined up for their new money, the Deutschmark. Each person could exchange 40 marks and only 40 marks.